and now we get to take our time, do the twin turbos before Atlanta, uh, get Darren the horsepower that he needs. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of the car, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of off the shelf parts, um, which makes life easy. It makes the spares easy and, uh, you know, easy to fix and repair. It's something you, you dream of as a, as a, you know, a car builder and, and, you know, maintaining these vehicles and repairing them and just the constant, you know, work and blood and sweat and tears that goes into this. This car is so good right now. I mean, it's really good. So it's got to be one of the best Silvias in the world, if not the best. Uh, if we make all this power, we can put it to the ground and it still handles the way it is. I don't know what the, the outcome will be, but it's cool. It's a, obviously it's such a drift chassis and such a famous chassis worldwide used by everybody. So it's cool to have that kind of development of it continue and it's, it's a really old car as you know but we're still making it better and better and better and you'd think a 700 horsepower sprint car motor inside and one would be almost a peak but now it just keeps ramping up and up and we'll see we'll see what the the end product is going to be so this year i got brz super brz um with are you laughing already <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. The actual engine compartment of the car, the BRZ, is actually quite a bit bigger than the S chassis, so it made room to fit a lot more, being a, a giant turbo and same, same V8 that Dai ran in the S13 for a number of years. And basically, like a lot of the suspension components and interior, like the Sparco with the seats and brackets and everything, a lot of the stuff's already available for these, so it, uh, definitely makes life a lot easier from that point. So you're not making custom seat brackets and everything, you know, and you start pushing the kind of power that it takes to be successful in the series. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So we're trying to avoid all that. Once she's dialed in, it's going to be a beast. I mean, to come straight out of the box and be pretty competitive at Long Beach, you know, I think we did a darn good job putting the thing together. Obviously, with drifting, there's there's certain attributes that you have to <laughs> add in there. But uh, for the most part, it's a it's a road um, road race based suspension, like the old Trans Am days, with uh, with the added obviously added angle and some weight transfer. I really enjoy the fact that, like I said, I have carte blanche to do what I want when I want, and um, Falcon does support me 100 110 percent. The car that it is now, compared to just over a year ago, is night and day. The suspension underneath it, the steering angle, just the overall feel of the car. It's such a well-balanced car. It's really easy to drive. Predominantly, the car has been based um, all the years that, that uh, Justin has kind of been behind the wheel with the Mustang with the previous team on the East Coast. The car has always been based around the primary driver of, of Von Gittin Jr. It was, there was very minor tweaks that were based for Justin, but overall the car was has always been planned and designed around another driver. Uh, my goal was to be able to take the car and mold it and bring it to the driver's needs. And uh, with that being said, we've changed, the, the, the total platform is completely different. From when the other team used to maintain the car and, and modify the car, it's definitely not the same car. Rick, he knows what he's doing and I'm glad that he's on my team. In the main day, I choose to follow someone, and I just uh, turned him with Chris Forsberg. He was leading it, and uh, it was really good. And I was driving really well until coming off the keyhole. Uh, I was really tight, and uh, I guess uh, he his gear popped out, so he basically, you know, stopped. And then I was too close that I couldn't really avoid. And I just hit his, I think his rear quarter or something with my right, right hand side front wheel. They towed the car back from the track to the pit. You know, as usual, Scott, Mike, Chris, and Shay, they all worked really hard. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the car back together to battle Kenny Moen. So that was 
that was it. That was the end of the day for us. Uh, but you know, it's a new car, brand new car, so it takes time to get everything sorted out. But I can tell everything's going, moving forward. Um, just taking time um, and just uh, hoping next round will be a lot stronger. And then, you know, we have to regroup and um, get the car back together. Um, and I just drive really, really well next round, and hopefully we can get the podium. We had no practice. I mean, I think at the point that we came to Top 32, I had six runs, I think, maybe less, including that like wet qualifying kind of warm-up run that they gave us. So, I mean, got up against Kyle Mohan in 32. I wouldn't say I, I was actually pretty confident that I could that I could do it, you know, that I could drive through it. So I backed off a little bit, um, just make sure you don't overshoot turn one, kill yourself before you start, and uh, it worked out. You know, that was the the game. That was the only strategy we had. I just had to settle down, 80 percent, and hope that the other guy, you know, pushed too hard and made a mistake. And it happened for us in 32. But, you know, we actually put in a great lead run. You know, he was right there, but. The run was solid, no mistakes. And uh, my chase, it just, I pulled third gear and it just misfired badly. He pulled like three, maybe four cameras on me and I was playing catch up for the whole run. So that was it, you know, no regrets. Uh, move on, these things happen. Keep smiling and uh, stay positive for the next one. Atlanta definitely didn't go exactly as planned. You know, when you're driving an 860 horsepower car, and you try to dial it back to drive in the rain, you're almost better off getting a stock car out of the parking lot and driving that. Got lined up against uh, Vaughn Ginn Jr. in top 16, and you know, it was the battle of the Mustangs. somehow kept it together and came back on track and I gave him a little bump from behind and he kind of pushed me off track and uh, we just kind of danced around through the track to get back to the starting starting line and complete our lap. Good job Justin, um, I'm pretty sure he'll be dog point since uh, he was in your way and went off track and back on so uh, just uh, put down a solid run and uh, you felt how it is out there. Do your thing man, take it easy. So when I led, I, I entered but it wasn't as slick as it was the first first lap, which was really awkward because it was not even like a couple minutes apart. So anyway, I ended up straightening out and kicked it back and went around the track and uh, it just wasn't good enough to get the, get the win. So we ended up going one more time. Now we're going one more time. I thought it was a pretty even battle on, on my follow. On my lead run, you know, I just gave him hell and put together a really good lead run. Created a little bit of a gap and then he closed it a little bit at the end and you know the judges saw that it was a pretty even run. I think the, the spectators really enjoyed it because I mean we're just we're both out out to win. I think it was one of the best battles of the evening. We're going one more time. Wait, wait. Yeah we're going one more time. One more time. Fans are liking what you're doing, dude. They're over here uh, yelling your name. So uh, keep it up, buddy. On my fall run the third time, I just pushed a, we, I pushed a little bit too hard, and I think we maybe had a little bit more car than, than they did at that point, and I just I nailed them on entry. I thought he was going to be a little bit faster through that section, and. Fortunately, he wasn't, and I hit him and spun him out, and obviously at that point there was a huge disadvantage for me. Everything looks good from here in your car. I can't see anything but mud. All right, they're saying we're at fault, so uh, just give him hell. So went into the my final lead run, and I was like, you know, at this point it's go for broke. You can go big or go home, and I just tried to throw it out there as hard as possible. I, I felt like I came through that first corner faster than I did all weekend. I know I used way more throttle going up the hill and 
uh, into the horseshoe than I did because there was nothing to lose at that point and just overdrove it and ended up spinning out in the horseshoe and my fate was sealed at that point. I think this loss was so tough because I've been so close to a championship several times and anytime you get knocked out before top eight, you know that the chances of a uh, championship are, are smaller. And there's nothing more than I want than to win a championship in a teal and blue car. You know, JR won a championship in a Monster Energy uh, Falcon Mustang. Uh, Dai won a championship in his discount tire Falcon 240. But I want to win a championship in a Falcon tire Ford Mustang.